Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Sohini from South Bay, California and I welcome you today. So today our episode is going to be about something with, that I've been you know, wanting to record for some time but was just not getting the opportunity. Today we start looking into AutoML or automated methods in order to generate the best classifier and the best uh, regression model and the best set of features and also the best set of hyperparameters. Um, if this is of interest to you, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. AutoML, again, it, it's not the best thing for somebody to get started into uh, AI and machine learning. So if you're a starter, I would highly recommend you get some basics of uh, you know, machine learning algorithms before you get into AutoML. But I have been using AutoML for some time and most of the time AutoML is extremely useful to ensure um, you know, that every single time uh, you, you're doing your experiments with the correct set of hyperparameters and they are very benchmarkable they are very useful for baselining so uh, if you want a quick uh, you know second look or if you really want to figure out if, if the classifier that you have has the best set of parameters then AutoML can be very useful. With the advent of the cloud platform-based solutions such as AWS, GCP, and uh, of course uh, Azure, um, AutoML comes in built with these platforms. However, they do come at a price, um, but the, the cloud-based uh, you know, agents or, or AutoMLs can do much more than what typical library of AutoMLs uh, that can do. But the, the interesting fact is you don't really need to subscribe to cloud-based solutions to utilize AutoML. So what I will be showing you today are two completely free libraries. One is called Tbot and the second one is called Auto SK Learn. And both have um, you know, plugins that can be used with Google Colab as well. So I will be showing you an example of Tbot with uh, you know, Colab as well as of Auto SK Learn with Colab, and uh, I will be showing you how to utilize them, how to uh, you know get started with them and how to actually interpret the results that you are seeing. So let us look into what AutoML entails. So the primary advantages of AutoML, like I mentioned before, is it helps with optimal data model and typically you can utilize it for classification and regression. Uh, there are generally no uh, you know, support provided for semi-supervised and unsupervised data models though in, uh, in these setups. So typical optimal, uh, you know, optimal data model for classification regression, definitely there is support for that. You can definitely do uh, you know, a hyperparameter search. So essentially, uh, you know, you look into uh, it's it's a grid search uh, and sometimes it can even be random search which is typically found been found that it is uh, actually better it, it improves speed uh, in order to find the best parameter so let's say if you're looking for uh, the best SVM or support vector machine so it looks at all possible values for the C value and the gamma value the and even for tolerance um, that you need in order to uh, you know get the best classifier out there it can also even uh, help with feature selection. So if you're looking at you know specific combinations as, as PCA or how many principal components will be useful. So even that information you can get from this. And uh, then there is uh, the, the cloud providers that, that I was uh, mentioning before. They actually provide an extra support, which is optimal network parameters. So let's say if you're using deep learning models, how many layers are, are good enough? How big or how small should your network be? So that help is also provided by the the cloud uh, you know you know platforms and by cloud platforms I'm talking about auto glue on which is uh, pretty well known and that's AWS's uh, you know auto ML solution then of course there is uh, GCP they have their own auto ML and Microsoft Azure has their own auto ML solutions as well if you would like me to cover in any one of these please do leave a comment which one is more interesting to you and uh, I'm uh, you know I'm more than happy to look into them you know, in future so let's look at some of the AutoML packages that are not cloud-based, right? So the ones that will not cost you anything and uh, typically they are they're free and, uh, you know, so that you can, they're just packages you download and you'll be able to use them with your Jupyter Notebook. So AutoSK Learn is pretty well known. Uh, then AutoWeka, again, it has been uh, developed for, for quite some time. And then there's H2O, and that's a company's uh, AutoML version as well. The one that I will show you today, and that's the one that I used uh, quite a lot, is called teapot and it's called the tree-based pipeline optimization tool and again I found that um, 
most of them are very similar in performance there's uh, one blog that i will be linking in the description box below that shows a description it actually shows benchmarking on on 12 different data sets for all these uh, automls and you'll see performance wise they're all pretty much very close to one another um, so that's why uh, it's it is generally one or the other you don't really have to use all automls it's if if you know how to use one in a good way you should be you know good to go now let's look at the the two major uh, you know ones that that we see in the in the industry uh, today one is that the teapot like i mentioned and that's the tree based pipeline optimization tool uh, in this method it used genetic programming in order to 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 secrete or in order to uh, you know come up with the population or a set of populations uh, that further need optimization right so it it will use the the you know properties of of genetic programming of uh, you know selection population selection then uh, then you have mutation and then you have crossover uh, in order to you know select this is the this is the set that needs further optimization uh, it constructs machine learning pipelines using the sk learn algorithm so i it will be basing its performances off of the sk learn so in order for teapot to work you will need sk learn in your system uh, you know that should be uh, already pre-installed uh, and it, it also works on xg boost so you you might want to even have sklearn along with xgboost uh, in in your system upon search optimal model and hyperparameters are exported uh, like i mentioned it does classification regression and feature engineering and performs multi objective optimization uh, with the with the goal of keeping the components in the pipeline as small as possible and it definitely supports sparse matrices as well so if your data has a lot of nans in them or if it has a lot of zeros if you've cleaned them out um, this teapot will definitely work on on them at all, um, as well then there is the auto learn uh, you know uh, and again what the auto learn again it, they, they're just two different uh, kind of uh, installations that you have to have and i'll show you both um, so in in this case the major difference is auto or sk learn again it, it works off of the sk learn uh, library of, of classifiers and and data models but uses bayesian optimization so what it does it provides sk learn interface in python and uh, how does it use the bayesian optimization so uh, a bayesian optimization that means there is a prior and then you will be creating a posterior distribution and then the posterior distribution will then be further subjected to more uh, you know parameter tuning and and, and further uh, optimization so uh, that that is again something that is very common uh, you know in in the industry so bayesian optimization is typically more preferred than genetic programming because genetic programming can be uh, sort of slow in in its uh, in its performance um, then there is feature engineering and one hot digital uh, you know feature standardization pca classification it's everything is per you know provided by the auto sk learn and meta learning is used to initialize the optimizers using the base rule so um, these are the, the the two major ones again these are just libraries that you install and you're good to go what i'll be showing you next is um, how uh, to to actually install the libraries and how to get working on them all right, so I wanted to go over auto SK learn first, and then I will uh, show you how um, I have made use of, of Teapot. So this uh, this is again a publicly available uh, collab page. And what I'll be doing is I will be linking this in the description box below so that you can uh, run it as well. Um, so auto SK learn does have a requirement for you to install Swig. And again, this is so that you can uh, it, you, you can talk to the C++ library. So that's why you will need to update your Swig. You will need to install Cython, and um, th then you will need to install the Auto SK Learn. So this uh, collab page actually goes through everything. Um, so once the installation is done, uh, this is showing the the example. So you take the data set and. Um, So essentially you have this data set and you split the data into train and test. So that's exactly what we are doing here. We're using the SK learn a model selection test train split in order to do that. And um, once the data is split, the parameters that need to go into the SK learn. So you just import auto uh, SK learn dot classification. The parameters are pretty simple. You just say the time left for this task. So in this case, I'm, I'm saying that you run the auto ML model for at max uh, at at most two minutes, you know, two minutes, so 120 seconds, and per runtime. So the spend at at 
at most 30 seconds for each model training. And if you're not done by 30 seconds, then then stop and then move on to the next model. So that is uh, precisely the parameters that you set to auto Learn. So you don't give it any other parameters. You just tell me, uh, you know, tell it how, how long uh, you need to spend on, on each and every task. And uh, once that is done, it will actually, uh, you know, return the, the best test score accuracy uh, and then in in this case as you can see the best test score accuracy was 0 0.99 on the MNIST data set which is actually pretty close to uh, what you can do if you had uh, you know the, the normal data set to begin with so that was typical auto SK learn right now I wanted to show you the performance of teapot and again it's it's the same uh, uh, you know it's it's an auto ML uh, toolbox and I wanted to show you its performance on uh, another data set so let me first here just uh, get all the uh, you know commands and all the packages and now what I'll show you is I've loaded the data so let's do a df dot head to look at what the data looks like so this is you know what the data looks like again it's it's again from a from a latest paper that we've had I'll, I'll link the paper in in the description box as well if you wanted to look at the data set from there as well um, so let's look at the shape of the data to begin with so it has 25,000 rows and 14 columns and these are all the columns so they're all numeric and you've seen, uh, you know, th these are typically one hot encoded or, you know, they have been uh, the, the, the numerical values have been, uh, you know, found corresponding to the categorical variables. And then I will also download uh, the, the test data. And again, the test data and the train data, as you can see, they are 25,000 uh, by 14. And uh, I can even check if the test data is different from uh, the train data or not. I just do the head command. And uh, I'll be able to see the first few, you know, the, the price is 242 um, and the 869 for the next one. Again, the prices are different. So, of course, they are two different data sets, right? Now, what I will do is I will install Teapot as shown here. So, for Colab, again, uh, it will, you know, generate a YML. Once that is done, let's do, uh, again, just let's just get the classifier. So, um, I'm just printing the the training shape and and test shape and then this is what we are doing so in this case notice the the parameters that i am going to pass is the number of generations like i said it's genetic programming so you have to pass the number of generations the typical amount of population size the higher the number goes that means the more and more accurate so ide ideally there should be a higher number so that is the minimum number of population you should have in order to uh, you know ensure you you keep going on in your uh, optimization and verbosity means it's going to print out whatever it's finding and the random state is just you know you, you, you give it any random state you can even have it as as a zero or, or 42 as as in here so these are the parameters there's a lot of more parameters and uh, I'll, I'll link the this this blog uh, in the description box below where you can see all the different parameters that you can uh, use for teapot so uh, let's just export that uh, so what this will do is again, this is how the optimization progress is going to go on and you will see as you know uh, it, it keeps coming close to completion it will start uh, you know it will come to 100 percent and it also exports this this pipeline. So what is the final classifier? It will also export that pipeline for us. All right, so finally this has stopped you know all running and I had given it five generations. so you see finally the five generations are complete. And from here, we can see that extra uh, trees classifier, so it's a decision trees, uh, along with PCA, is actually giving it the, the, the best method to, uh, you know, that's the best classifier and the best uh, set of features uh, in order for, uh, you know, this classification to work. And it'll also give you the hyperparameters, like uh, the criteria is entropy, then there's maximum features, um, and then, of course, uh, the minimum number of samples, uh, the maximum depth, number of estimators. So you will get details like that uh, for AutoML. So I'm hoping this will be helpful to generalize for your data sets. Um, in, in, in future. Let me know how you find AutoML and Teapot specifically. Thank you.